OK, this video is all about this component here, the light emitting diode, or LED for short. Before I actually talk about the operation of the LED, I'm going to take it out of the circuit and just talk a little bit about this component, the lamp. It's a filament lamp and this end here is connected to the positive terminal of my battery connector, negative terminal connected to this end and of course the electrical energy is being converted to light and heat. I've got the negative terminal as I said here, the flow of electrons that make up the current would be from the negative terminal through the lamp to the positive terminal. If I was to then take this out, change it around like so, I've now got the end which was connected to positive is now connected to negative and vice versa. It's also obviously, as you can see, it's giving it light, it's conducting when it's placed in the opposite direction around in the circuit. Let's compare that with the LED, the light emitting diode. Positive terminal here, I'm actually going to connect it, and you'll see this in the diagram on screen at the moment, that this end of the LED is known as the anode, it's being connected to the positive terminal, negative terminal here is being connected to the other end known as the cathode. Now I know that's conducting because of course the LED is giving it light. If, however, I do the same as I did before with the lamp, turn it round, so this time the anode of the LED is connected to the negative terminal and the cathode connected to the positive terminal, no light, it's not conducting. OK, so basically the LED, you can think of it as a, a one-way street for these electrons making up the electron current. Negative terminal to the cathode, positive terminal to the anode, and it will conduct. What I'm actually going to do at this point is to measure the current in the LED. Move a few things on the desk and move the camera over. There we have the ammeter. So if I switch that on and... Obviously, to place the ammeter in the circuit, I need to open up that circuit and then complete the circuit by placing the ammeter in series. Now, this is set to measure in milliamps. So the current at the moment in the LED is 7.4 milliamps, a very, very small current. I'm going to compare that, of course, with the current in the lamp. The only thing is, of course, the lamp is larger. I'm not quite comparing like with like, it's also brighter as well. But you can see it's much, much larger, 110 milliamps in this filament lamp. Basically, this filament lamp is less efficient. What it's doing is it's using electrical energy, converting more of that to heat and a smaller proportion to light. So one advantage of the LED, I'm going to take this filament out and switch to the LED. One advantage of the LED is that more of the light, or sorry, more of the electrical energy is converted to light, less is heat. And that's why, as you can see, why the current is smaller. Now, the second part of the video, what I'm going to be talking about is this resistor here. I've not mentioned that up till now. There is a resistor in series with the LED. Why it's there is to limit the current in the light emitting diode in order to prevent it from being damaged. So in the second part, we'll be working out the value of resistor which we should then be placing in series with the LED in order to serve that purpose, in order to protect it from damage. OK, in the second part of the video, I'll be answering this question. A circuit is set up as shown in the diagram. The maximum voltage allowed across the LED is 2.0 volts and the current in the LED must not exceed 10 milliamps. Calculate the resistance of resistor R. So, of course, the important thing is we're told the maximum current in the LED and because, of course, this is a series circuit, the current will be exactly the same in the resistor because in a series circuit, the current's the same at all points. Second thing, of course, is that this acts like a voltage divider. So we know, of course, that that supply voltage will be split up across the resistor we're calling that VR, of course VS is the supply voltage is split across the resistor and the LED. Now at this point of course we know the supply voltage from the circuit is 9 volts. We know the voltage across the LED is 2 volts. So we take that maximum value. We can then of course rearrange that equation to give us the voltage across the resistor which will be the supply voltage VS 
minus the voltage across the LED. Then of course if we substitute the values, as I said the supply voltage is 9, voltage across the LED is 2, which means that across our resistor we have 7 volts. Now what we then do is we use Ohm's law, which is V is equal to IR, and therefore to find the resistance of the resistor, R is equal to V divided by I, and as I said, to find the resistance of the resistor, then we need, of course, the voltage across the resistor, which we've worked at is 7 volts, and the current in the resistor itself, and as I said, the current in the resistor is the same as the current in the LED. So we have 7 volts divided by our 10 milliamps, of course, needs to be converted to amps. So that's 10 times 10 to the minus 3. And at that point, use the calculator to work that out. 7 divided by 10 times 10 to the power of negative 3 gives us a resistance of 700 ohms. Now that's just a quick example. And of course, there will be more questions in the examples video. So look out for that one when it comes out. But for now, thanks for listening.